Welcome um, to the Cancer Vac CEO Chats. I'm um, today. I'm joined by my friend, Dr. Dinesh Patel. So, Dinesh, thank you for joining me. My pleasure. Um, I'll start by just giving a little background on your career. Uh, feel free to, uh, you know, correct anything that I that I, uh, you know, if I've missed missed something or if there are additions that need to be uh, added in, but. Uh, Dinesh, you graduated from uh, Garrett University with a Bachelor of Science in Pharmacy. Um, so it's actually called Gujarat University. Gujarat, yes. My, uh, it, tell me, what country is that in? India. India, western part of India. So I, I, I need to brush up on, on, on my foreign language skills here, Dinesh. <laughs> <laughs> but thank you for clarifying that. You know, following that, you received a master's degree from from Philadelphia College of Pharmacy and Pharmacokinetics. Um, I can pronounce Philadelphia pretty well. <laughs> <laughs> and then from there, you went on to, to get a Ph.D. also in pharmacokinetics uh, from the University of Michigan. Um, it just as a quick aside, uh, I was uh, born and raised in Michigan, lived there till I was 11. My father was a rugby player at University of Michigan back in the in the, uh, I guess this would have been the late '60s. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I grew. I grew up as a kid singing "Oh How I Hate Ohio State" songs. Right. <laughs> we all still do. <laughs> <laughs> so, Dinesh, you know, uh, finishing your your uh, your education, you you began your career by co-founding Theratech, a biotech company uh, that you ultimately took public. Um, and then sold the Watson Pharmaceuticals. Um, and, and I think this is what brought you to Utah. Is that correct? Uh, yes. So, I mean, after my PhD, I worked at American Cyanamid for three years and then at Archon Labs in Fort Worth, Texas yeah. for another three years before I moved to Salt Lake City to start Theratech in 1985. How about that? <laughs> That's great. And Watson, wait, who is Watson? I know Watson was acquired by an, another big pharma. So well, Watson first. was one of the largest generic companies. Yeah. And then uh, they've got, they went through several mergers, but finally they acquired Allergan. Allergan, that's correct, but, yeah. And then Allergan was acquired by Abvi, which is a yeah. spinoff from, from Abbott. Abbott. Uh, from Abja. No, yeah. sorry, Abbott. I'm sorry. Abbott. Yeah, from yeah. Abbott. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. No, that's great. You know, and, and fo following Theratech, you co founded Salus Therapeutics, which is a biotech company focused on, well, in dealing with nucleic acid uh, therapeutics, including gene therapy. Um, so you, you just dove right into it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we were a little bit ahead of our time at that, uh, you know. In 2000, uh, nobody was thinking about RNA as therapeutics, and we were a little bit ahead of our time. Yeah. We got acquired, but the acquisition didn't prove out to be great because, again, the technology was ahead of its time. Ahead of its time. You know, I, as, as a, a fellow entrepreneur, I've had, I've had some, um, some good hits, and I've had a couple swings where... Uh, you know, I was ahead of my time as well. So I understand what that feels like. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, you know, following Salas, Dinesh, you founded uh, Ashney Nutraceuticals, uh, served on the board of Protolex, the chairman of Ustar, which, uh, which is a big deal in the state of Utah. Um, uh, you're a board member of the Leonardo, which is a very prestigious museum in, in Salt Lake City. I've been there um, Many many times, um, member of the board of the Symphony uh, Utah Symphony and Opera. Again, been there many, many times. Um, you founded the Patel Family Investments, so as a family office now making investments through your family office. Um, you serve as the executive chairman of Xenocor, right? Um, chairman of the board at Lightline Medical. Yes. Uh, Co-founder of Hydrus Management. And co-founder and board member of New Eyes. So, uh, <laughs> Dinesh, I, I have to say that usually these CEO chats that I do are, you know, 20, 25 minutes long. 
Um, and I fear that we've kind of used our entire time just talking about your resume. <laughs> but what an impressive resume. Thank you. Thank you. And, and honestly, truly, as, as a fellow Utah, and thanks for all of your contribution to the state, to, to the world, not just, not just the biotech space, and that's kind of what we're here to talk about today, but, um, but also to the tech space and the venture space. Uh, in the in the state of Utah, which uh, lots of gratitude to to you and all you've done. Thank you. you it's know, it's been a wide ride. <laughs> I bet it has. Um, you know, it's um, it's. Let let me talk quickly about V Spring Capital. That's another one of your one of your ventures. You started a venture capital firm, one of the very early like real venture capital firms in Utah. And um, I, I don't remember, Dinesh, exactly the year you started, but I think it coincided pretty close to when I when I finished my undergraduate degree. Um, were, were you guys yeah, pre-2000, I think, right? So we actually launched the fund in 2000. 2000, okay. 2000, actually, 2000, 2001 time. Frame. Right, right. Yeah. So I, I graduated college in 97, and uh, started my first business. It was a it was a tech company in '98. Um, we presented to Vspring. Um, sadly, you guys turned us down. But <laughs> <laughs> I don't blame you. We were young and and uh, inexperienced. But ultimately, it worked out great. And um, you know, we ended up receiving investments from Bain Capital and Excel partners out of um, you know the Bay Area and and uh, and then KKR from New York and mm -hmm. um, but uh, my association with vSpring I got to know very well Scott Petty and uh, JD Gardner and he and I crossed paths in Cambridge at grad school and uh, I, I guess Jeff Curl who started Stamps yeah. co-founded Stamp Socks um, and of course, Greg Warnock and Ed Ekstrom and Paul Alstrom and gosh, so many that they, they just you guys are all real pioneers in, in the venture space in Utah. And uh, e even though you didn't give my company money, uh, I, I always respected your firm and uh, it, it was really good for the state and for the Intermountain West, really. Right, right. I think when we started, there was hardly any venture capital in, in yeah. the state and Again, we were raising money at a very difficult time. Yeah. And uh, fortunately, at that time, the government did have a SBIC program. SBIC yes, program. I know you were one of the pioneers of that. Yeah. So every dollar you raise, the government put in $2. And that helped us get to a size that was uh, respectable. So. Yeah. Well, what, what, a great, what a great thing. And I think you know David Bradford, and he, he actually... David, uh, who's a friend of yours and a dear friend of mine, um, this is a funny story, but uh, I invited David out and gave him a pitch. Shortly after, I pitched uh, first Fraser Bullock, uh, not Fraser, uh, yeah, Fraser Bullock, um, and then I and he, he said no. We pitched V Spring, and he said no. <laughs> yeah, you said no, and then I then I pitched David Bradford, and David said, "What do you want?" And I said, uh, "Just a small investment and come sit on our board." And uh, David wrote us a twenty-five thousand dollars personal check, and uh, and I quit my job and started the business. And uh, you know, we ended up raising, you know, over close to fifty million dollars and sold the company for over a hundred million dollars. And um, it, it was a great ride. But um, yeah, yeah, in those early days of a company, twenty-five thousand is a significant investment. Really is. It's a big deal. So. Really is. Really is. So, as uh, uh, Dinesh, you, you as uh, a student in college, if we go back a little bit, just to your college days studying pharmacokinetics, um, which essentially is the process of turning an NCE, and for those who don't know what that means, it's an acronym for uh, new chemical entity, right? Something that you and I are very familiar with in the biotech space, but uh, making old drugs and you know, repurposing them, kind of, you know, in many regards, kind of like what recursion is doing. Um, I, I'm interested. Um, what got you? In, what got you involved? What? What? Why were you interested in that field? So a lot of my background um, at American Cyanamid and at Alcon was in drug delivery. At Alcon, we were looking at trying to transport drugs across the eye membrane, you know, in the eye. 
Yeah. And because most of the drugs don't stick around, the tear yep. fluid is so high that it drains very quickly. Washes out, yeah. yeah. Part of, uh, at Alcon, there was also a dermatology division, and I worked quite a bit on skin formulations. Mm-hmm. And at that time, Alza was probably the only company that was thinking about transdermal drug delivery. Mm-hmm. And I found that uh, quite fascinating because we were doing some modeling using uh, animal skins to see how drugs permeate through the skin, yeah. what can be done there. So again, the field being so new, most of the large pharma were focused on NCEs, right? New chemicals. Yeah. And I saw an opening for somebody to, like you say, repurpose drugs. Mm. And uh, transdermal seemed to make sense because there were a lot of companies trying to do control release tablets. Sure, sure. Some other products, but there was really nobody in this space. So that's probably why, Hmm. uh, you know, in 85, when I moved here, um, and, you, you know, we didn't have, we started the company with two professors from the U. We did not license any technology from the university. We did not have any technology. Huh. I started everything from ground zero. Wow. So, uh, you know, it was, I mean, that's what created all the fun. I was, <laughs> at, at, in the starting, I was the only employee. I was the janitor, the scientist, <laughs> guinea pig, whatever you want to yeah. say. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, with $40,000, you couldn't afford to do much more. No, that's so true. Yeah. So. Yeah, I've been there. I've been there a lot of times in my life. <laughs> and, you know, I, I think it's really interesting. Um, in a lot of the biotech companies that I've been involved in, we've looked at either sub-Q or intravenous administration. Um, but, you know, I've come to learn that that uh, transdermal or even the topical type of delivery method, and, and that maybe, maybe that's, I, I'm curious, I, I've learned personally that from a regulatory standpoint, you can still deliver, deliver a very efficacious dose to people, um, but it's it's less invasive, um, and and I and I know that the regulatory process is is a lot less, right? Not quite as as onerous. I'm, I'm wondering, was that sort of a shift in your career where you started looking at uh, at med devices? Because I know you've really done a lot of a lot in the med device space. Yeah. So when you do a transdermal patch, you're combining. Uh, the pharmaceutical end with the medical device end, because mm-hmm. in the end you have to manufacture a patch, which yep. is a device, right? Yep. And then, um, so we, you know, again, at that, in the early days, there was a lot of buzz about transdermal. Everybody saying everything is going to go transdermal, mm-hmm. not realizing that what you need is a small potent molecule yeah. and uh, that can cross the skin. Yeah, yeah. God gave us a Into skin the that, mm-hmm. yeah, the, God gave us a skin that things don't go across. Otherwise, we mm. would be in serious trouble, right? That's right. So, so I, you know, we started out with testosterone as our model compound. Oh, interesting. Yeah. And, uh, yeah, at that time, the hormone replacement therapy in men, or the testosterone replacement, was only 30 to 40 million. And Alza was developing a product, which was a scrotal patch. Hmm. So in my thought, I said, if I can put a patch anywhere else on the body, I have an advantage. And that's why, you know, we focus on that. And, yeah. and today, you know, the hormone replace of the testosterone market is several billion dollars. So yeah, big one. Yeah. 40 million, it has grown quite a bit. So. Yeah. Absolutely. You know, we're um, uh, right now. The the my latest venture is developing new cancer therapies. We're looking um, m- more at it. We're definitely focused on the immunotherapy side of things. Really trying to um, inform the immune system to understand and detect 
uh, tumors um, and then uh, uh, essentially teach, uh, teach is probably the wrong word, but inform them to recognize, detect, mark, kill these tumors from an early stage um, and uh, through a vaccine, potentially even through a, a transdermal patch, but it's getting that antigen. It's really marking a tumor and finding those biomarkers that are similar um, in cancerous tumors that are that don't have similarities with healthy cells, right? And that's mm -hmm. that's kind of the trick. And we've partnered with UCLA Medical School. We're, we're fortunate for that. But um, you know as as well as I do that developing uh, whether it's a, a med device or or a new drug, uh, it's hard. It's time consuming. It's it's expensive. It's difficult. Um, so uh, understanding that. What is it? Yeah, I can answer that for myself, but I'm curious just for, from you, you know, knowing how hard it is, how expensive, how time consuming it is, uh, what invigorates you about this about this field? And why do you why do you keep jumping back in uh, to, to this space? So if you see my investments, they've shifted from NCEs to medical devices. I've and noticed that. Mm -hmm. And, you know, it's, it's a matter of time and economics, right? Yeah. Yeah. A, a new chemical entity can easily take 8 to 12 years yeah. and take hundreds of millions of dollars. If you're lucky and your initial data looks good and somebody either acquires you or puts in more money, great. Yeah. However... In today's market, everybody is waiting for phase one, phase two data. Mm -hmm. So you have a lot of expense before you can get there. Yeah. Medical devices are relatively easier through the FDA, right? If you have a, a 510K or something. 510K, yeah. yeah, you can get through easily. The, the cost is sub 50 Much million, less. yeah, mm -hmm. timing three to five years for an exit or maybe less. But the need is still there. I mean, again, the devices that you know I've been focused on are just as important as a drug, right? Sure, if you sure. look at, and, you, and you, you looked at, or you're familiar with Xenocor, which is a disposable laparoscope, one of the first disposable laparoscope. The project started out at the University of U uh, Utah at Center for Medical Innovation, and where they were looking for innovation for third world countries. What because a five hundred thousand dollar equipment is not feasible sure. in third world. Yeah. So the idea was: can you develop something at a lower cost that can go outside? Uh, you know, in the third world countries. Well, we, it started out as, as a student project, we brought it in, and we realized that this is a much bigger opportunity in the US than in the third world. So, so we're, uh, you know, that's one of my, uh, yeah. I think is one of my more exciting companies right now. I, I think it would be, a, uh, I'm hoping it would be a big hit for us. You know, I, I have to say, um... Number one, I'm super excited for you for Xenocore. And number two, uh, I think I mentioned to you previously is you know I started and sold three companies and then got into the venture world and and yeah I remember a time where you invited me and a, and a colleague to listen to a pitch at Xenocore for Xenocore and to make an investment. Um, I, I went back and I I have enough time between then and now where I can tell this story very openly, Dinesh. But uh, but I went back and said, this is it, guys. We got to invest. And I recommended. And, and unfortunately, I lost that battle. We didn't end up investing. And that's one of one of the bigger investment uh, regrets that of my career, because I've, I, I think it's a brilliant technology. I'm super excited for you guys. Yeah, it's, you know, the, I mean, it's not a radically different technology in that the surgeons know what they're, they're using yeah. a scope, whether it's a disposable or the regular scope. The advantages obviously we have is not only disposable, but better picture, looking and through a fog, yeah. no 
no fogging, looking through smoke, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. But the challenge that people, whoever is evaluating the company, will say, "Well, how are you going to displace the existing uh, product in them?" And and yes, that's a a, a good question. And and you know, we feel that if not totally replacing the existing machine, because our scopes can be used on existing towers. Yeah. You just keep it on because they break quite often. You don't have to wait until your product or your scope is sterilized and brought back into the room. Right, sure. You open up ours, you're off and running. So it, it may take a little bit of time, but the advantages and all, and the world, you know, the medical field is moving towards disposable products. So I think we're at the right place at the right time. Yeah. And yeah. You know, um, on a very similar note, you, you mentioned just a moment ago how at Xenocore, you guys, and this is off a little off script, but uh, yeah, how you you originally thought about developing this for third world countries. And I was um, in a previous biotech company working on um, developing new antibiotics. And when and we created, again, it was a, a University of Utah spin out where we licensed a number of technologies from you. Um, and one one of the the more promising technologies was for tuberculosis, mm -hmm. and uh, what what we found that was interesting was TB is is a massive problem globally, but it's not a problem in the United States or in Europe, right? Uh, and so you know we ultimately ended up um, presenting to um, probably a half a dozen times or so to the Gates Foundation and the TB Alliance which is funded by the Gates Foundation. And, um, and there, it was it's so interesting because their response back to us was, listen, your, your, your safety profile and your efficacy is probably better than any, anything we've seen, um, but it, it has to be a delivered IV. And, mm -hmm. um, and in a third world country, that doesn't work. We right. need something that's yeah, insanely cheap or that you can give a quick shot uh, you know, a sub Q kind of a kind of an injection, um, and, and just because of the delivery mechanism that we we hadn't worked out all all of those profiles yet. Um, you know, we had a drug that was stale, very right. good potentially, um, but there wasn't a use for it in the United States just because people typically don't get TB in the U.S. Right. Right. Um, so there, it, I, I I point that out just really kind of to illustrate that you know the nuance. Of, of the drug development industry. It really is quite interesting, isn't it? Yeah, I think, uh, you know, the, the two things that people look at, uh, of course, efficacy is number one, and then reimbursement. Is sure. there somebody who's gonna buy your drug? That's right. When yep. you go to the third world countries, you worry about who's gonna pay you, right? Yeah. Government, a lot of the governments we promise something and the money doesn't show up. <laughs> so, you know, whenever you're dealing with third world countries, you try to go through WHO because at least yep. you know they can pay you. Yep. But in the US, it becomes a problem. If it's not a US pure, yep. nobody cares. Yep. And that's why we went through the Gates Foundation. We knew that they had allocated a certain amount of money. It was one of their five missions. and. We knew there was money there, but we we just couldn't deliver it in a, in a in a way that was, I guess, convenient, right? Or uh, for for people in in uh, sub-Saharan Africa or wherever. But uh, yes. but a very very interesting. Um, Dinesh, listen, uh, I've really enjoyed speaking with you today. <laughs> um, you, you you're a, a bit a bit of a legacy. Uh, and and a, a, I would say a, a very important person in the state of Utah, your contribution to the venture world, to the tech world, especially to the med device and the biotech world is significant. And uh, um, so I, I appreciate your time. I, I'd like to perhaps close with maybe one question. Uh, what, what advice would you give to a young uh, entrepreneur who's interested in the biotech space? You know, again, uh, as you're experiencing like, uh, right now, there are so many opportunities. And, and, you know, the thing with a lot of these diseases, 
And just like what we are finding with COVID, the virus keeps changing. Same thing with the cancer drugs. They yeah. keep changing. So the opportunities are, are great. Yeah. The challenge is all obviously funded. And this is where the SBIR program is pretty good. I mean, the phase two is now a million dollars. So no, I'm that, a big fan of the SBIR program. If you yeah. can show at least some proof of concept no. with that money, then uh, the opportunities are there. Yeah. It's a challenge, it's difficult, but again, if that's your dream, there's so, so many new diseases the existing diseases that don't have the right cure, right? Yeah. And, yeah. And you mentioned, Nino, you were talking about Curza, the drug, uh, not only TB, but the, there are so many uh, diseases becoming resistant to right. antibiotics. And, and yeah. right now, no pharma companies really investing in antibiotics. Maybe we 10, 15 years from now, <laughs> they are gonna run. It, and, you know, it was interesting. That was always that was always our challenge. And we we raised, you know, uh, grants plus venture, I think, while I was CEO over one hundred million dollars there. Um, however, um, it, it's tricky and, and it's tricky because the world needs new antibiotics because these these microbes, these bacteria, they mutate and they change and they become yeah. resistant to the current you know, set of drugs. Uh, but but the challenge is if you look at it from I mean our as a young entrepreneur as a as a as a biotech guy like I am like you have been we 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 need to sell our companies to big pharma or license our tech to big pharma and let them do the marketing right I don't want to start a, a marketing group of you know thousands of people knocking on doctors' doors yeah that's we're sort of the early stage high risk R and D group for these 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 biotech companies but. Um, if you're a if you're a Pfizer or a Merck, uh, you'd rather invest in something where where someone like a Lipitor, a purple pill, where you have to take it every day for the rest of your life. With an antibiotic, it'll kill you if you don't treat it properly. But if you treat it properly, it's gone in two two to three weeks. <laughs> right, right, right. And so the ROI is so different, yep. but the need isn't any different, and that yeah. that's where it becomes difficult. Yep, uh, and and again, you know, th since '85 to today, you know, when in those days you have a drug that's potential of hundred million, that was a home run. Today, if you're not a multi-billion-dollar drug, hey, forget it. Yeah, you know? yeah, we'll so, take somebody else. Right. So things have shifted, mm -hmm. but you know, there are always new companies coming up. There are new technologies. So for an entrepreneur. I say, think big, dream big, and just go for it. I think that's great advice. And uh, I, I consider you a, a, a real pioneer in the space. And, and, uh, and, and I hope to follow in your footsteps as a, as a new gen pioneer. But uh, uh, what, an exciting, what an exciting space where we can use our ingenuity, um, our creativity, and uh, do good and hopefully do well at the same time. Um, Dinesh, thank you so much for all, not only for all of your contributions, but uh, but thanks for your time today. It was fun talking to you. Well, thank you very much. And I wish Cancer Wax uh, a lot of success because we do need, we need to get rid of cancer, right? Everybody's working towards that. And I hope Cancer Wax makes a big contribution to that. Thank you, Dinesh. Right, thank you. Cheers. Have a great day.